to say that this game came as a surprise is an understatement. Considering all the areas it excels in, that the project would be realized by two people is so hard to believe. Not only is it one of the best games of 2022, but in survival horror memory. Signalis starts with a command, wake up, or space vessel, on course to explore the fringes of the solar system, has crashed. Stranded in an unknown planet, with no signs of our companion, we disembark in search. While there is a sense of duty, lines blur to a more compelling and personal reason, even if we are an android. A promise. We're arriving at the mouth of a mining facility, we descend a flight of stairs, and crawl into the depths of hell. The echoes of Silent Hill are undeniable, in the objective of finding someone dear to us, in the appearance of the corrupted staff, afflicted by an organic growth that has long started its spread, and in the coldness, the desolation of its environments. The approach to its story, which from the start, will make a player sense that there is more to be gleaned from a surface does too. But like its sci-fi aesthetic, the story is also where it pivots more into its own identity. While most of the game is presented from a top-down view, it uses a mix of cutscenes and first-person sequences to drift you into the surreal. You could be producing an item, then immediately whisk aboard a subway for a key card. It does all of this while feeling cohesive, greater because of the risks to experiment. It kept me engaged, curious where the spiral of events would take me. As I played, I couldn't help but be reminded of the themes of Shimigami Tensei Strange Journey, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Nier Automata. The three opened themselves up to philosophical discussion, to interpretation. Signalis is no different. The approach to combat, or rather the attitude to its action, does resemble more Resident Evil. Ammo and healing items are scarce, so you'll often have to weigh their use. And with the six item inventory limit, they're carry. Enemies do fall after a few shots, to be taken out by a stomp. But taking a cue from RE Remake's Crimson Heads, if you don't take the time to light them up, they can reanimate. A few hits are all it'll take to bring us into a critical state, where the next is fatal. Two interesting points though that I will come back to. We can recover out of it, that by default allows us to cycle another hit and saving is free as well as unlimited. For sure, it is wise to be healed up, if just enough, as you never know when you'll be overwhelmed. Combat feels good, but not every situation warrants an offensive. You can stealth your way through, and with practice, learn to dodge past attacks. Sometimes you are better off routing the enemy. We don't have access to a melee weapon as a main to save on ammo, but we do a sub-item slot for a stun prod, among other things. It's single use, but it'll drop most enemies, multiple if close. Save it for an emergency or to clear a path. Once you get a hold of other items, especially the flashlight, it does become tricky to balance with the gun. You'll often have three slots left. I can't deny it can get tedious at times, especially in rooms full of goodies, retreading ground. But also, the item management is part of the charm, that it helps to create tension as much as commit areas to memory. That proper routing does eclipse any negative I could feel. And the layouts of Signalis are one of flow. The game is rich in rooms, halls, and corridors. The map updates to reflect places we visited. Points of interest are marked so when you find that necessary item or key, you'll squander no time in determining where to go to next. Other survivors will be encountered along the way. Together with text logs, propaganda, and tech, they'll make the place feel real. That it could exist. At their end is a boss fight, always affording the chance to save beforehand. They're not too difficult. They're a good way to cap off an area that'll propel you into the next. I commend the developer for the environments, but also for the puzzles. They tread the tenuous line of feeling just complicated enough where you'll wonder what to do, but just simple enough that as you think it over, you'll be struck by insight. A few can be brute forced, while others, even with the answer given in a note, will leave you stumped. My favorite puzzles involve the radio, a permanent in-game item. You obtain it early on and are made aware how it could be tuned to a frequency for a code or recording. It integrates well, even usable against an enemy type. When I was most, what the hell do I do? It would come into play. One puzzle in particular stands out, involving a wall safe that uses letters in lieu of numbers, arranged randomly. I had a cipher, but I couldn't figure it out. Something was missing. Thinking of the radio, I recalled a note about frequencies I could tune to, giving me what I needed. 
I took the pen and paper, successfully arriving at the solution. I felt like a genius. That was a running theme. Puzzles that don't feel obtuse. Like they're wasting my time. Too complicated, but just right. In solving puzzles though, I did encounter this. In any horror game with a limited inventory, I try to carry only the bare essentials. Heal just enough to survive a hit. My only ammo was in my gun. Everything else is placed in the box until needed. By the end of a game, I'm stocked up. Using the best with the abandon. It's my victory lap. How I like to express my survival. I mentioned earlier that you can recover from a critical state that it can be cycled. Well, I originally overlooked the fact that there was a combat option. That it was left all normal. Essentially, it became my only source of healing. It's a hallmark of survival horror to minimize danger. But after a while, I decided to box even my weapons. Do I need them when I could dodge and soldier past threats? I could have sustained a fatal blow if careless. But barring the final parts of the game, it never crossed my mind. Regardless of close calls. When healing items are available, having any degree of regenerative health is puzzling though. It also felt too efficient to ignore, despite doling the tension. Considering our saves are not limited to an item either. But they were a conscious choice. Intentional design. Not just by the menu option. That once changed to survival, their critical cycling doesn't matter. You're dead. But the conditions set by the game's endings. There are four, three of which are determined by how you play. The fourth by items needed before the final boss. The implications of each scene fitting too. That in a game where interpretations play a role in grasping the story, not one is outright a bad ending. But I am glad I received the one I did. It adheres most to how I would have wanted to end things. The game overall is great. But if there were changes I make this acknowledge, it would be to have a difficulty select. One where the critical health regen is removed. Saving restricted. Call it hard. Had I the option from the start, it would have been opted for. Or making the addition of challenge modes, since it is viable to play the game with high risk. Incentives for replaying the game would also be welcome, since as of now there are none. But these are the early days of Signalis, and I can imagine changes to come in future patches, at least as mods on PC. Still, all I wanted after beating the game was to start it all over again, to be more efficient about my routing. My first run took me about 10 hours, with my second run looking to clock much shorter than that. Survival horror is a unique genre to me, where there's an appeal in doing everything faster, more minimal, and when necessary, more aggressive. I'm having fun doing just that. Signalis is deserving of all the praise it has received. It's a game that defies expectation, one you won't want to put down, leaving you to wonder when you do. If you yearn to play a new survival horror experience that can stand with the Vanguard, Silent Hill and Resident Evil, this is it. No matter your choice of platform, the game is available to be played. PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. And if you happen to subscribe to Xbox Game Pass or Humble Choice, complimentary. It's a game that's being voiced as one of the best by Arnon fans of the genre and of 2022 overall. Don't you owe it to yourself to play something extraordinary?